have. So cellular control is really the story about how gene expression is controlled. And gene expression is about switching genes on and switching genes off, uh, having more of a gene, having less, or having more of a protein in a cell, or turning on the uh, production of a protein in a cell or switching it off. Um, doing that as a part of the normal developmental process so that we get a cell's behaviors changing over time so that they can become specialized or as a response to internal communications or as a response to environmental changes. So all of those things occur, all of those changes, very important changes in cellular behavior and activity happen because we are turning genes on or switching them off, we are producing a protein or we're, we've got less of it. And what we mean by that is the genes we have are being expressed or they're not expressed. We are regulating or controlling gene expression. Let's just talk first about what gene expression is and then we'll discuss um, how it's important in other parts of biology. Okay, so remember, gene expression is about the gene to protein story. Okay, so we have a gene and that gene is going to be, so there's going to be a number of things which might signal towards the gene, right? So we could have environmental stimulus, we could have cell signaling happening, well, ultimately, it's a cell signaling, and that could be caused by a hormone, or it could be environmental factors. Okay, left my rubber in the wrong place. All right, so let's just remove that. So one way or another, you've got a gene in, on a chromosome in the nucleus until now that was not active but now it is needed so either a hormone signals or the environmental something changes and now we need that gene to be on and so what happens so i'll just remind you of the story then so remember the gene then what what what's going to come in you're going to get transcription factor proteins and we're going to revisit these in a bit You've got transcription factor proteins. These are proteins that bind DNA. And you get RNA polymerase, yeah? So RNA polymerase has the ability to bind to a gene and transcribe it into mRNA. But RNA polymerase doesn't select which gene to bind to by itself. It needs transcription factor proteins to recruit it okay so as a result of this we have the formation of the transcription initiation complex transcription initiation complex and as a result of that we have so when you get the formation of the complex at the beginning of the gene thanks to the transcription factors that's when we get transcription Okay, so in module two, when we looked at protein synthesis, we kind of ignored this because that might have been too much information for the, that time in your biological journey. But as a second year, this is the full picture that you need to have in your mind. Okay, so we've got the transcription initiation complex. Transcription occurs, we get the mRNA, then the mRNA goes into the cytoplasm, binds to the ribosome, as a result of the ribosome acting, we get translation and we get a polypeptide which might be modified before it can function, but the function leads to the response. Okay, so the protein then is working. It might be an enzyme, it might be uh, another signaling protein, it might be a structural protein, but the cell has now behaved slightly differently and so either we get the cell 
turning from a stem cell into a skin cell. It might be that the cell is now producing a hormone, whereas before it wasn't. Okay, but these are, are results of gene expression changes. All right, and this, this topic is all about how this is affected. Okay, what are the things that can impact on that? Or what's the significance of this? So, with that story then in mind, we go on to cellular control. So, I mean, what, what I think is very important here is that you have a good understanding of the topic of nucleic acids, right, in terms of structure, especially in terms of function. Right, because we've got transcription, translation, we've got the structure of the DNA right there. Okay, so nucleic acids, let's not forget about that topic in light of this. Okay, so now let's move on. Yeah, so we have gene expression. So, what are the things that can affect gene expression then? And that's what cellular control is all about. All right, so. Um, Actually, no, before we do that, let's talk about, let's just talk about the context of where, where have we seen this before? So gene expression can undergo what I like to call regulated changes. So this is when we are messing with gene expression, but it's part of the normal functioning of the body. Okay, so where have we seen that? First main example, we've already kind of touched on it. Differentiation, right? Cells encounter a signal. The signal causes gene expression changes. The cell starts to become, or a stem cell might start to become a muscle cell because it's, it's now expressing the genes for uh, myosin, actin, all the, all the proteins needed to build the sarcomere or it might, it might be expressing proteins to form the um, axon for it to become a, 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 new, a nerve cell, okay? So differentiation then, differentiation results in gene expression changes which allows the cell to specialize, right? And it, it might be important to just look again at, or just overview of the special adaptations of cells and tissues uh, in module two. Okay, uh, another example is hormonal hormonal communication. Right, when that steroid hormone binds its complementary receptor, that complementary receptor is guess what? It is a transcription factor. And that transcription factor is only in the nucleus and recruiting RNA polymerase because the hormone is there. Okay, kind of parallels with the whole lac operon thing. So hormonal communication and responses, all the responses that you might see to, uh, especially like steroid hormones, are carried out, a lot of them, through signaling to the nucleus to express new genes. In the immune system, right when when we've got the activation of cells, the activation of uh, immune cells or lymphocytes, right when 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 the T helper cells turn into uh, or or specialize into or differentiate into the uh, T killer cells. Um, T memory cells, right? Those cells are changing because their gene expression is changing. Okay, so generally speaking, when a cell's behavior is changing, it's that's uh, usually a result of gene expression changes. Okay, now they are also unregulated. So there's, there's changes that happen, so unregulated. Right. Or I, I might put it also as unintended or accidental. So these are the things that we want to happen because they're supposed to. Normal physiological stuff. But
But there's stuff that happens that's not intended, and that's where we talk about mutations. Okay. Unregulated, and by unregulated we mean mutations. So this is the context. Okay, this is where this is what the topic is all about, and now we'll discuss the, the main parts. Okay, so the three main parts of the topic are these. We start with mutation, changes to gene expression which might be unintended. Right? Our next topic is, I like to summarize it as gene regulation. Yeah, so what are the processes by which we can manipulate gene expression? Okay, and finally, we've got kind of like a tacked on a little bit, but the, the, the example of gene regulation takes us at some point to Hox genes. I don't know how we'll get there really, but Hox genes are essentially transcription factors. Hox genes, their main purpose or the reason why or the, the impact of their gene expression affects development of the organism, right? From zygote to fetus to baby and so on, right? Development, body plan, etc. And it's the laying out of the body plan that involves, so to get the right body shape, body plan, we don't just need proper gene expression, we, part of that is also affecting mitosis and apoptosis. Okay, so mitosis is controlled cell division. And apoptosis is controlled. Well, is it is it always controlled? It might go out of controlled sometimes. Controlled cell division and apoptosis is controlled cell death. Okay, so those are needed to set up the right body plan. Okay, right, so let's begin with mutation very, very quickly, as quick as I can do. It is an overview. Okay, so the, the, the broad things I've set this out as, so first we've got types of mutations, types of mutations, then we've got effects of mutations, and I've also got results. Don't ask. Okay, uh, effects and results seem overlapping. But hopefully you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get there. Okay, it's just that there's a lot of ways to describe uh, the impacts of the mutation. And right now, I can't, I know that there's a difference, but I can't really articulate it very well. So this is what I've done. Anyway, types, main types. Sticking to the spec as the main guide, there might be additional information but this close to the exam and like sticking to kind of core principles, let's just focus on what is on the spec. Types we have insertion, right? So we've got a gene, it's a sequence of bases and the sequence of bases might contain insertions. Okay, so bases inserted into the sequence due to errors during replication. We might get substitution and we might get deletion. Now at this point in your study, at this point in your study, you should be aware of what we are talking about here, right? So I'm not going to define it, but I would like you to remember that all of these can, the number of bases, actually let's not put it there, okay, the effects do depend on the number of bases the mutation involves. Because if we insert 
one base, we are going to change the reading frame. So that's going to impact on the protein a lot more than if we inserted or deleted three bases, which would only remove one amino acid. Okay, so there is that to consider, but these are the types of mutations. Their effects can be in the range of, and again, depending on the number of bases, the effects could be. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here, when we talk about mutation, I think a lot of people use terms like frame shift, nonsense, and insertion interchangeably and harmful interchangeably, whereas actually those, those words describe subtly very different things. So one is we've got the types of mutation. The second is what are the effects of the mutation. So those effects could be in the range of, actually, they could be completely silent, or they could be a miss, they could be missense mutation where we've got an alteration of some kind, but it's, it's not going to be a huge impact, okay? And again, there's, there's a whole range of scenarios. There's not, there's not strict rules around this, because for example, we could, we could have one amino acid difference which is a missense uh, mutation. We could have a one amino acid difference, which because of the part of the protein where the amino acid is changed, it has hardly any effect. Like it doesn't have any effect. Or it could be that the amino acid that we changed was right in the active site of an enzyme, in which case now it completely cannot bind its substrate. So even though a one amino acid change uh, can have a range of uh, effects simply due to where that mutation happens. Okay, so even though we're setting out some general ideas, be aware of the different kind of uh, nuances of what these impacts could be. Okay, so we could have silent, we could have missense, and we could have nonsense. All right, now the nonsense usually is to do with frame shift and in fact I'll put frame shift down here or frame shift should be an impact here okay so frame shift remember if you're inserting or deleting kind of one or two bases or non multiples of three bases then you're likely to cause a frame shift change in the reading frame okay so frame shift and that's usually a bad thing because they might prematurely introduce a stop code on, right? Uh, missense, we're talking about change in one base, sorry, one amino acid. Um, let's just write that clearly. Change in one amino acid. Silent is no amino acid change. Okay, right. Let's move on. The results. So the end result of which could be completely neutral. So we might even change one amino acid, but doesn't affect the function, so it's neutral. Or we might change one amino acid, and we might get something that is harmful. Right? And obviously, a nonsense mutation is always harmful, because most of our protein is not there. Uh, but on the very, very rare occasion, otherwise evolution wouldn't happen, um, on the very, very rare occasion, we can have beneficial mutation. Okay? Very, very rare. All right? So, mutation right there. There's a lot of work with the genetic code in the mutation because it, uh, it, so you're required to kind of see where, what the impact of a particular change in the uh, base sequence will, uh, what change that will cause in the, what a change in the DNA triplets would cause in the mRNA codons and how this might have impact on the polypeptide sequence, the primary structure. Okay, so yeah, and regarding this, you're going to get, you, you might you might have to refer to the properties of the genetic code, the nature of the genetic code, i.e. it's degenerate, 
which kind of explains many silent mutations, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so just there. All right, let's get into then gene regulation, unless I'm forgetting anything. Spec says, look at gene regulation at a number of levels. So we are looking at transcription level, post-transcription and post-translational, right? So transcription, post-transcription, post and they have a very clear idea in your mind about what transcription means. It's the, it's the stage that takes us to mRNA, okay? Or at least an RNA copy of the gene. All right, and that finally then takes us to post, post translational, post translational. Okay, yeah, and the Hox genes are essentially just an extension of the whole transcriptional control. Okay, so I'll just do that okay so uh, what we discuss in transcriptional applies to Hox genes Hox genes are an application they're an idea that connects to the transcriptional mechanism of control so the idea of transcriptional is what we discussed here what I will remind you is that the lac operon is a, 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 a simple case right a simple example right it's an example it's an example of transcription factor control okay so I want I'm not going to go into the lac operon I do have a video on gene regulation if you if you do want to see me explain that but all I'm going to do right for now is just say lac operon is part of transcriptional it's an example of transcriptional control We've already discussed the kind of mechanism of transcriptional control. It's all about these DNA binding proteins. They can bind to the beginning of a gene in the operator region, and it causes the, or, and, and when they bind there, they, they kind of entice or recruit the RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter of the gene right next door, and that is what causes the transcription to start. Okay, so if the, the transcription factor was not on the gene, then RNA polymerase would never arrive and that gene would never get transcribed and so that gene would essentially be switched off. Okay, so the lac operon is an example where the binding of a particular protein to the DNA is dependent on the presence of lactose. Okay, and we, we want to know that example, but we also want to be able to take that example and apply it to any other given situation where we've got protein binding to DNA and the condition on which the protein binds to DNA is such and such thing. And we need to kind of play out that story depending on whatever scenario we are given. Okay, so transcriptional, lac operon, example, done. All right, and Hox genes. So lac operon essentially is an example in bacteria of transcriptional control, but Hox genes are uh, an example in animals, right? They are animal transcription factor genes. They are simply transcription factors that bind to the DNA, setting off transcription of sets of genes which, when expressed in certain cells, cause those cells to turn, to specialize into particular parts of the body. Okay, um, right, post-transcription is about, once the RNA is formed, that's not our final mRNA, we have, uh, remember, we have the uh, RNA splicing, right? We have introns removed. Introns removed. Right, we have exons put together, but the exons could be put together in different combinations and giving us therefore different 
versions of the same gene, right? So different mRNAs from the same gene resulting in different primary sequences, resulting in different proteins with different functions. Okay, so we have alternative splicing as a post-transcriptional kind of control. Uh, we can also have the modification of the RNA, okay? So we, can, we also have the five primed cap and the three primed poly A tail and these two things affect the stability of the mRNA and the more stable the mRNA is the more time the mRNA spends in the cytoplasm getting translated and so we get more production of the gene right if we don't have these and the mRNA is less stable gets broken down before much of it can be uh, before it can be translated uh, much into protein Okay, and post-translational regulation of gene expression is about, okay, we, so we've got our protein now, but we're looking at protein modifications. So what modifications can be done to a protein to cause its function to be changed? Okay, so we might have lots of protein, but if it's inactive, it's not going to do anything. Right, so certain things have to happen to a protein to make it active, and so some of those things are uh, things like phosphorylation. Phosphate groups added to proteins activates them or deactivates them. It might be binding to cyclic AMP, second messengers. All right. Then we move on to do, 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 body plans and the idea of the Hox genes, right? So these are essentially they are transcription factors, but these transcription factors, we know which genes they control. They control the genes that say to these cells, you become the arm, you become the legs, you become the head. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, basically, Hox genes, control development, and body plans. Homeodomain is the part of the gene that is common with all the Hox genes, that, and that common part is the bit that allows it to bind the DNA, because there's not a lot of different shapes that can bind the DNA. If you bind DNA, you've got to have a particular shape. Okay, so they all contain this, which is common. Uh, and the thing that comes up a lot with the Hox genes is about how essential they are. So because they are important genes, they, there's not, they are very what's called conserved. There's not a lot of variability in the sequence of these genes because the, they, their function is so important that any change in their shape causes them to not work properly and so those organisms never get a chance to develop and because they don't develop they don't they're not surviving they don't reproduce and so mutations in these genes are selected against all right just going to check if i'm forgetting anything in relation to hox genes i mean it's a complicated idea but i don't think the questions relating to these um, ironically, show a lot of variation. Yeah, I mean, there's not really a lot, a lot to say. Yeah, so certain, yeah, certain cells will express certain Hox genes, and be, depending on the Hox genes that they are expressing, they will have different genes then activated, and because they have different genes activated, those cells turn into different parts of the body. And actually, what this does, they, they do like to, well, actually, e even when we're teaching, we do like to give the example of what happens when Hox genes are mutated or, yeah, or there's something wrong with those uh, genes or they're not expressed or, or knocked out or whatever, something like that. When those genes are mutated and they're not working properly, that's when you get organisms with very... Um, uh, incorrect body plans and layouts of their limbs, etc. 
okay? So you've seen those weird flies with legs sticking out of faces, right? That's because Hox genes weren't working properly, so the right genes were not activated in the right areas of the body, and so those parts of the body turned into stuff that they weren't supposed to. Yeah? Okay. Um, and I think that that's it. Last thing, it's not like a huge thing, but mitosis. So mitosis is a topic that is here. So even though it's not on the advanced information, I would give that a look, um, right? But mitosis is all about controlled cell division. Remember that mitosis is part of the cell cycle. Give that a look. Um, and the cell cycle and mitosis by extension is controlled by cell cycle checkpoints. Okay, but that's not a huge part of, of, the, of that topic either, but it might just help to be aware of that. And, and, and what role does mitosis have in the development of body plans? Well, it allows proper, proper growth. Right? You, you need to increase the number of cells in particular areas in order for them to develop into hands, for example. Okay? Um, but we also need controlled cell death. So we need cells removed from certain parts for them to uh, develop into the right shape. Yeah? So for example, to separate the fingers during development, we need the removal of the cells in between. Okay? And that will happen by apoptosis. But in, in most cases, it's, I think you just need to appreciate mitosis for growth, apoptosis for the removal of the cells to form a proper body shape parts. Okay, and I think that is cellular control. Rushed it a little bit, but hopefully I've pointed you to all the major parts, hopefully highlighted any parts that you're not sure about, and there's still time to have a look at that. Because uh, at this point, it should be very, very targeted revision. It should be very big picture revision. Okay, guys. And yeah, good luck. <laughs>